Here we go. First question, right? Which of the following refutes the claim that GL3, I don't know what GL3 is, but let's keep reading. Uh, the set, oh, they're going to tell me. So GL3 is a set of 3 by 3 invertible matrices over the real numbers. So uh, like the set of all matrices, 3 by 3, that kind of look like that. So that's what that is. So which of the following refutes the claim that GL3, the set of all 3 by 3 invertible matrices over the real numbers, is an algebraic field? Oh my gosh, why is this the first question, right? I've never learned about fields before and not in high school. What's with this? So, but that's okay. Uh, you don't need to know much um, for this particular test. All you need to know are the requirements of a field, and I've got a worksheet on that and another problem that covers um, kind of going down the checklist for these. So if you're a field, you're a set of numbers, or in this case, a set of matrices or a set of things, and where if you do addition for these and multiplication for these, it satisfies all these properties. So we're still a little scared, but we're just going to attack, and we're going to go down the list, and we're going to say, okay, for number A, uh, there exists elements A and B of GL3 such that AB doesn't equal BA. So if AB doesn't equal BA, this would be a counterexample for your commutative property of uh, multiplication. And you need the commutative property of multiplication to be a field. So if it's true that there are th elements A and B such that AB doesn't equal BA, then that would, in fact, refute the claim that these guys are field. And so now we think, okay, if I have matrices, and this is A and this is B, does A times B necessarily equal B times A? And we're going to go over matrices later, but right, this is not true. If you multiply this guy by that guy and that guy by that guy, you're not necessarily going to get the same thing. So I think we run across our answer right away. There are, in fact, matrices A times B that don't equal B times A, which would be a violation of the commutative property for multiplication, which is a requirement of a field, and so we're supposed to refute the claim that these matrices are a field, and that would seem to do it. So I think we've got it. I think it's A, but let's just make sure the rest of them were not being fooled or something. So we go to part B, and they say there exists elements A and B of GL3 such that the determinant of A times B equals the determinant of A times the determinant of B. And we look at our requirements of the field, and we don't see anything about determinants there. So we're like, hmm, that's a little funny. I like this doesn't seem to be a requirement. And, and, and if anything, like determinant of A times B equaling determinant of A times determinant of B seems like it would support uh, being a field, if, if anything. So this one looks a little fishy, we're, gonna, we're still like an A, uh, we'll keep going, C. Uh, if A is an element of GL3, then there exists a matrix A inverse, such that A inverse times A is the identity. And that's a good thing for a field, right? That an inverse property of multiplication exists is a requirement for a field. So this wouldn't refute the claim that these guys are a field, this would actually support it. Um, so this would not refute it, that's not good. Uh, this guy here, uh, if A is an element of GL3, then there exists a matrix A such that the determinant of A doesn't equal 1. So again, you're looking at your requirements of a field and you're like, there's nothing about determinants, why do I care? And why do I care if the determinant is not 1? It might be a more interesting problem if it says 0, but no, don't care. We still like our answer 